What is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and we are back with another Greedfall build for you guys today and today we're taking a look at the Mystic Knight build. So guys, let's jump into the skill points and show you guys what's going on. So first off, what you want to do is you want to obviously start off with the Warrior class. So start off with that and from here, you pretty much want to dump all of your points into one-handed weapons. So guys, start off here and you can see Sharp Steel increases one-handed blades damage. Cruel Steel increases it once again by 20% on armor, unarmored enemies. The Kick unbalances more, not really going to be utilizing that. The Kick slightly damages armor, not going to be utilizing that. This is the bad boy that you want. Long Blades. Now, Long Blades will allow you to use two-handed Long Blades, obviously. And these are great for dealing with tons of enemies. So the basic ability does like a mowing attack that hits a lot of enemies in a small range. So attacking with Long Blades deals more damage. The mowing attack has an increased area of effect. So you can see there the range is increased by half a meter. And then you grab the Steel Squall. The mowing attack has a greater combo speed and Lansquet Steadiness. Balance when using Long Blades is reinforced. Grab that as well. You then want to grab Fury. So a Cry of Rage which greatly increases attack speed and combo speed. This lasts for 15 seconds. The chain speed is 50%. The attack speed is 30% and it costs 100 Fury. Grab that one as well. Now, it's up to you whether or not you want to grab these extra ones. The Regenerative Fury, you're not really going to need with this build. And same goes for the Powerful Fury. You can increase in the stun if you want to. It's up to you, but uh, by the time you actually hit them, they'll probably be dead. Now, guys, once you've maxed out your one-handed blade path, you then want to come over to uh, the Magic class. You want to grab Stasis, so grab Stasis, and then you want to grab Stagnation. You want to grab all of these, level them up all the way, and what you want to do is you want to grab Shield of the Enlightened. Now, what this does is it increases physical armor and regenerates it progressively for the duration of the effect. So, you can see there, effect duration, 20 seconds, for your generation, plus 10. The magic is 100, that's not too bad. And you gain 150 armor, as well as 5 armor regeneration per second. So, this is great for just jumping straight into the fray and dealing with a ton of enemies. You then also want to grab the Steadfast Light as well as Shield of Fury. Now, I would pretty much stop there. You don't really need the extra two skills, and I wouldn't really invest in Storm. You can invest in Storm if you want to, but uh, it's really not that great. So, you can see here the Holy Bulwark. You should probably invest in, although you're not really going to need it too much because by the time these enemies are actually going to get an attack off, they'll be dead. So, these two are really good to have because extra balance and extra Fury generation will allow you to pair it with uh, Fury over here. But if you didn't want to grab those two skills, you could actually just grab the Magic Healing, which will allow you to heal yourself if you wanted to, which isn't a bad idea to get. But it's up to you. So you can simply swap these two out for Magic Healing if you wanted to. It's either way up to you. Now guys, as for the attributes, you actually want to grab Agility. Main reason being because you need Agility to wield the two-handed weapons. I would go probably up to three. Three should be enough. And then go a couple of points into Endurance. Even if you go two points in Endurance, that will increase your tankiness by quite a bit and allow you to wear quite heavy armor. Uh, the rest of the point, you could just dump it into Agility for the extra damage. As for Talents, you kind of just want to go two points into Craftsmanship, two points into Vigor, and then go into Charisma. We only have five points available, so that's what we're doing. Reason why you want to go two points in Vigor and two points in Craftsmanship is because you can slot in extra craftsmanship, extra vigor. You only need a level two for each of these skills because armor slots allow you to increase them by one. Alrighty guys, so as for your equipment, you pretty much just want to equip the best sort of weapons and armor that you have. You can see here we've got this two-handed blade here, Claymore of the Cardinal Guard. Great weapon to have. We'll chuck that one on for now. And as for your secondary weapon and your gun, don't worry too much about that because you won't really be utilizing them all that much. As for your armor, like I said, just kind of the best of what you've got. As long as it's heavy armor, you should be good, but that's what you get your endurance for, because your endurance will allow you to go for the heavier stuff. So you can see here we've got a legendary armor, old steady gloves, we'll go for those as well. And you can see there, we'll just go for those. It looks like they're nice and strong. And that's pretty much it, guys. So let's get into... Where's our sword? We don't have a sword. Where is our sword? There it is, so it just magically appeared. So guys, we're gonna go show you uh, the actual power of this build. Alrighty guys, so when you go into battle, you wanna make sure you pop Shield of the Enlightened. That'll pretty much allow you to regenerate any armor you lose. As well as that, you then can pop Stasis if you wanna sort of freeze some enemies in place. But you saw there, those poor guys just got absolutely annihilated. 
We are playing on hard difficulty as well, and when you eventually get up to your maximum fury cost, you then obviously want to pop fury off. Fury makes you an absolute beast of a damage dealer. So just make sure that you utilize your stasis in order to freeze your enemies in place and just go for the attacks. Make sure you're constantly dodging as well, but you can see there that that dude just tried to kick us and had no effect on us. So this build is really great for just getting into the thicker things and dealing with any enemies you come across. You can see there we're dealing for 558 damage. So we are pretty good. Now, Shield of the Enlightened doesn't actually restore your health, so that's why I said it is probably a little bit better investing into the magic healing so that you can actually heal yourself while in battle. So guys, we're going to go into another battle and show you guys the power of this build. So guys, that is the stopping power of the Mystic Knight build. It's a great build to use and you can easily make yourself one of the tankiest dudes on the battlefield by utilizing this build. You can see there how much armor you grab from the Shield of the Enlightened. It's great. If you pair this with the magic healing as well, you'll pretty much be unkillable as well, guys. So guys, that's going to wrap up the video today for the Mystic Knight build. Let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments. Let me know whether or not you uh, have any ideas or anything like that. But other than that, guys, thanks very much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.